Hi, I'm Caitlin Dubin, and this is the Rural Woman Podcast. I'm a first-generation farmer who married into agriculture. Born and raised in a city, I was so unfamiliar with where my food came from, but I was determined to figure it out. Through my journey into agriculture, I saw women who were strong, but humble, often taking a back seat. To me, these women were leaders who deserved a seat at the table. I created the Rural Woman Podcast to share the voices of women in an industry whose stories often went untold. The rural entrepreneurs who live and breathe their work, full of grit and pride. We come here to share our stories, to be in community with each other, to be challenged and inspired, but most importantly, to be celebrated and to be heard. We may not all live, farm, ranch, or homestead the same, but we are all connected. We are rural women and our stories are worthy of being told. Hey everyone, welcome to this special episode of the Rural Woman Podcast, episode 200. And I will be doing a solo show today on the main feed, which I have to tell you is not my favorite episodes to record. Talking into the microphone all by yourself can be big and scary even after you've recorded over 200 podcast episodes in five years. But Here I am showing up and uh, we're going to have a great uh, discussion today and celebrate our stories being shared on the Rural Woman podcast. Today, I want to talk to you about resilience and rural women. And this was a topic that I took a lot of time to come to of what I wanted to record my solo show about. The last solo episode that I recorded was 100 episodes ago on the show. And it was about the things that I had learned from rural women from the first 100 episodes. Well, now that we're at 200 episodes, I've learned a whole lot more. But the one topic I want to focus on today is resilience, because I know there are a lot of feelings that come up when we hear the word resilience. And I want to share with you a special recording from my friend, Loren Van Uyck, who you heard previously on the Rural Woman podcast. You heard Loren's story on episode 190 on the Rural Woman podcast. Loren was busy working on a project to rewrite Paul Harvey's famous So God Made a Farmer, and she rewrote it through the eyes of female farmers, and I'm so grateful that Loren has agreed to let us air this on the Rural Woman podcast. So please have a listen to So God Made a Farmer. And on the eighth day, God looked down on his vast expanse and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. God said, I need a person who can wake up at the crack of dawn, organize children, order animal feed and pasture seed, Prepare three meals and two snacks, shear sheep, and drive her brood and the neighbors to the local 4-H club meeting. So God made a farmer. I need a person with hands tough enough to saddle a stubborn mare, but gentle enough to cradle a dying kitten. Someone to create vision, make critical decisions, communicate a credible plan, and negotiate a contract with men who think they belong elsewhere. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody who will sit up all night with a sick calf and watch it die, bury it, and work to keep the rest of the herd from illness. I need somebody who can make a loaf of bread, swing an axe, clean a chicken, plant seed, drive a grain cart, haul pigs to the sale barn, and then run to the local hospital to care for the sick and dying. So God made a farmer. God had to have someone willing to bring meals to the field grain to the elevator, in-laws to the doctors, and race against the impending storm, and yet will halt any task to help dry the eye of her hurting neighbor. So God made a farmer. God said, I need someone who can pay the bills, sell the produce, call the vet, power wash the cedar, and train even the most reluctant foal, but who will stop at nothing to ensure her children learn the value of hard work. 
It had to be somebody who would nurture when others said it was a waste, who would stand toe to toe in a man's world and plant her seed, tend her field, harvest her crop, and finish off a hard week's work by volunteering at the Ag Society's fundraiser. Somebody who would hold the family's legacy, laugh deeply, and with tender eyes let her daughter know she can do the same. So God made a farmer. If that audio clip that you just heard is not the definition of getting a little misty uh, on the Rural Woman podcast, I don't know what is. Thank you again, Loren, so much. We'll be sharing the video portion of this on our social media as well. So make sure you're following us at the Rural Woman podcast everywhere on social media. And uh, you can see the video that goes along with it and all of the incredible women who participated in this project. So thank you again so much, Lauren. Hearing that really brings into perspective all of the different hats and different things that we as women in agriculture are faced with on a daily basis. And I think back to five years ago and in the podcasting space and in the agriculture space of podcasting, the fact that I started this show because the stories that we had to share were not being shared and they weren't being celebrated. And the number of women who viewed their stories as something that wasn't important or just what we did, it didn't need to be celebrated. And I've been arguing that fact ever since. And the numbers don't lie my friends. I gave a podcast interview earlier today for another show, and I look back at the first dozen or so interviews that I recorded, not knowing that anyone would listen, not even my mom was not going to listen to podcasting and let alone women's stories in agriculture. This was not something that was necessarily being done in this way. And I remember the hours and hours it took to learn what it was I was doing. And I can honestly say it wasn't done, you know, perfect, but it was done and it got out there. And I didn't know if anyone was going to listen. And this week, um, doing some back-end paperwork and stats, we found uh, download numbers. Your stories have been downloaded over 700,000 times. And I couldn't be more grateful for the women who have trusted me to share their stories and for the folks who want to learn and they want to listen and they want to feel like they are a part of something. And I am just so damn grateful for each and every one of you who has shared their stories and for those who take the time each week to listen. And so obviously grateful for my team who has allowed this to keep going because if it wasn't for them, you wouldn't hear these stories. And when I think of how on earth did this happen? How on earth have we kept going for 200 plus episodes and been heard in countries all over the world? And it comes back to resilience. And I'm going to be honest, the moment that I'm sitting here recording this, the resilience is the hardest part, but it is the most rewarding part of anything that I've done in agriculture and what we're doing here today. And when we're talking about resilience, I wanted to know what you thought of when you thought of resilience. And so I asked my community, I asked on social media, when you hear resilience and rural women, what comes to mind? And the responses, quite simply put, are beautiful. And I just want to share with you some of the messages that I received of what you think of when you hear resilience and rural women. That giving up isn't an option. It's not in our blood that every stumble and every success, we move forward and we push through it. We show up even when we'd rather be in bed. We are creative and we get creative 
We have heart and we endure. Often our resilience is in silence because we're not given a choice. And in agriculture, when people think of resilience, they think of the farmer. Typically, it's not us. It's our partners. It's our dads. It's our brothers. It's not us. That's the silent part. We think of the women who did this before us. And we think of the women who didn't grow up this way, but learned to be resilient and embraced the lifestyle and the challenges that it put in front of us. And we've made it our own too. We don't have to do it the same way that our grandmothers, our mother-in-laws did it. We can do it our own way. And I think we've proved that I've seen women proving that time and time again, that we don't have to do it the same way. And if you do it different and it works, great. If you do it different and you fall on your face, get back up and try something else. That's resilience. And I know, God, I know the world is is full of a lot of sad things. And it's not lost on me, the privilege that I have and the privilege of so many others. And when I, and I can't be alone in also feeling that the resilience is the most exhausting part, the pressure and the judgment and all of the things that are piled on us, the mental load that goes into being a rural woman is exhausting. And there are times I don't want to be resilient. And I know I'm not alone in that. So please know if you're hearing this and the word resilience just gives you the ick, I'm right there with you, girlfriend. But what happens when we show up, when we don't want to, there's something that happens. It builds that connection. It builds something in our brain and in our soul that makes us know that we can do anything, even if we don't want to. We can show up. We don't have to show up and be our best selves. Trust me, we don't have to. But if we show up and we try our damn best, that's all we can ask for. And girl, if you feel like giving up, please don't. I can tell you in 200 episodes, in five years, the amount of times I've wanted to give up has probably been more than I've stopped to actually celebrate anything that I've ever done. And saying that out loud right now, saying that out loud right now, I'm embarrassed, I'm ashamed, but I'm going to say it for the people who feel that way and who won't voice it. I'm going to say it for myself so I can play this back and to know that by showing up, even when you don't want to, that is resilience and it's going to get better. Rural women and women in agriculture have been my bread and butter. They have been my passion and it is what I think about constantly. It's the conversations that I have behind the scenes of how do we make things better and how do we enhance the lives of women in agriculture and rural women. And these are the conversations that are so important to me. And the way that I show up and the way that I do things can be completely different than somebody else advocating for the same thing. And at the end of the day, as long as we're still talking about this, as long as there's still women who are not given the opportunities that our male counterparts are given in this industry, we will still be talking about women in agriculture and female farmers. And I have to be really honest with you. I have had these conversations to the point where it's exhausting. It's exhausting to use your voice and to feel like you're not being heard. And for someone 
who is just starting out, I get it. It's so exhausting to get your story out there and to share the same stories over and over again. But the more that we do it, the more that our voices get heard and the more that can change. And I have to make a point here, and it's a point that I made in an episode of Maybe You Can Relate, where I shared a story about being asked to be on a panel uh, with government officials, with a room full of incredible women in agriculture, where we shared the things that we need to be successful and to feel valued and to have the things that we need in order to be successful in this industry. And as an entrepreneur and as a small business owner, I have experienced this more times than I can count in the last five years of trying to get the buy-in from our industry, the buy-in of the value of our stories, the value of the dollar that a woman in agriculture has clout over, where the money is going, where the money is coming from, all of these things. I am a woman who has ran a business, and it it, it feels weird to say this for you. I started this podcast, like I said, not knowing if anybody would listen to it, and it's turned into my career. It's turned into what I do for a living. It is a passion project turned profitable. And I have gone through ebbs and flows where there have been people pounding at my door, knocking it down, saying, let us give you what you need to be successful. Here is X, Y, and Z. Here is this many dollars. We support women in agriculture. And when those contracts run out, or when those conferences are over, or any which way that it happens. And you come back and say, can I count on you for your continued support? And that could be something on farm. That could be buyers. That could be sellers. That could be equipment dealers. That could be anything. Put yourself in this situation. You've been in this situation where it's raw, raw women in agriculture. We support women in agriculture. And then the next marketing cycle, they're gone. And the next selling season, they're gone. And the next buying season, they're gone. And I know there's so many different reasons that can happen. But I'm here to say this to you right now. Women in agriculture are not a trend. It is not trendy to support female farmers. It is not trendy to have us on billboards, to have us driving your tractors, to take pictures of us, to have us outstanding in our field, to say that you support us and what we're doing for you to not show up again and again. Because like I've been saying here today, we are resilient and we keep coming back and we keep showing up whether you do or not. And as women in agriculture, we have to stand together. We have to not fight one another. We have to work together. We have to collaborate. We have to make things happen for us. Because that shows industry. That shows the naysayers that we don't give up and we are resilient. And we're not going anywhere. We've always been here. Women in agriculture are not a trend. And my friends, I hope you keep showing up. I hope you keep sharing your stories. Because like I've been saying for the last 200 episodes, the last five plus years, your story matters and you need to keep sharing it. I am so grateful for you, for being here, for showing up. So grateful for you supporting me and the Rural Woman Podcast. This podcast has changed my life. This industry has changed my life. And I am forever grateful for you. Thank you for the first 200. Let's try for 200 more, shall we? (laughs) 
Until next time, my friends, keep sharing your story. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Rural Woman Podcast. The Rural Woman Podcast is more than just a podcast. We are a community. A huge thank you to the Rural Woman Podcast team, audio editor Max Hofer, and admin support from Kim & Co. Online. A special thanks to our Patreon executive producers, Sarah Reedner from Happiness by the Acre and Carrie Munven from Laystone Farms. To learn how you can become a Patreon executive producer or other ways to financially support the show, head on over to wildrosefarmer.com to learn more. Be sure to hit the follow or subscribe button wherever you listen to the podcast to get the latest episodes directly on your playlist. And if you are loving the show, please be sure to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or any other platform that accepts ratings and reviews. You can connect with us on social media at The Rural Woman Podcast and with me at Wild Rose Farmer. One of the best ways you can support the show is by sharing it. Send this episode to a friend or share on your social media. Let's strengthen and amplify the voices of women in agriculture together. Until next time, my friend, keep sharing your story.